All right, when internet users lose their internet, everyone loses their minds, <laughs> which is pretty much what we saw today. <laughs> joining us and continue to uh, joining us to talk about today's gargantuan denial of service attack on a large domain name server called Dyn is Nicole Lee from Engadget. How's it going, Nicole? Hello, how's it been? The internet is back. Is it back? back? Well, yeah, things seem to yeah, be moving back. a little bit uh, faster. We're able to do this show. We're able to connect to you. Um, right. <laughs> I mean, but this has been an all day sort fingers of thing. Crossed. Yeah, exactly. Keep those fingers crossed. There might be another one. So when did the first wave of DDoS attacks happen today? Um, well, according to Dyn, it started around 7 o'clock Eastern. So around like 7, 7, 10 a.m. Eastern is when the first attack began to sort of show itself. Um, and DNS host Dyn was the primary target of the attack, yeah. what what mm -hmm. sites were involved in that? Because I know, like, I was trying to hit Twitter, and Twitter yeah. had a whole lot so of issues. It was like major several sites. Several different sites. I mean, Twitter was affected as well as Box, which is used a lot for file sharing. Uh, Twitter, uh, Netflix, I think as well. So Twitter, Box, Netflix, the New York Times, Reddit was affected, <laughs> Yelp, Pinterest, and PayPal. Wow. And this is just like a small sampling of what Dying hosts. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, so let's see here. There have been three kind of consecutive attacks that I've known of anyways. There was the the attack in the morning a little bit yeah. later, and then there was one very recently. Are we kind of coming out of the, the other side of this at, at this yeah, point that we so, know? Yeah, um, so the first attack started around 7 o'clock. The second was around noon Eastern, sort of. And then the third started around 3 or 4 o'clock Eastern. And right now, uh, it seems as if it's been resolved. According to Dyne, the third attack has been resolved. So hopefully we're sort of past that point and we're good. Um, but who knows? According to Dyne, it's a very well-planned and executed attack from tens of millions of IP addresses at the same time. So it's a very like well executed attack, not just like a guy doing it in his basement, you know, like this is a very well planned, right. very well executed thing. Yeah. And they've even mentioned uh, links to, uh, is it Mirai? Uh, Mirai, it's a kind of a source code that was publicly released very recently that seems to light up Internet of Things. And we've talked about on the show many times, kind of the insecurity of the Internet of Things. Brian Krebs also uh, has has talked about this. Is it possible in all of this that we actually have devices in our homes that are kind of being, you know, botified uh, for for attacks like this? Right. So exactly. Some some of these some of these Internet of Things devices that are being listed as in, unsecure are things like routers, right. security cameras, DVRs. So these are basically your everyday household things that are connected to the internet. And because these, because it's such a new industry, like IoT sure. is such a new and nascent industry, it's not as regulated as well as it should be. So, yeah, it, they're very vulnerable to these attacks, and it's very they're very vulnerable to mal to malware, like like the Mirai malware, for example. Mm -hmm. So we talked about this a few weeks ago when Brian Krebs' site went down um, and, you know, we said, well, what can consumers do? And there's really nothing consumers could do. I mean, this was really something that the Internet of Things, um, you know, that the creators of these devices, like they don't make it easy. You don't know how to update. It's not just like, OK, I got to update my Windows or, you know, got to update my Mac. Like what what can people do to secure their Internet of Things devices besides just not using Internet of Things devices? <laughs> I suppose that would be the easiest way to so just to not use them. But, uh, you know, a lot of them can be updated. Um, I think routers can definitely be updated for sure. I know that. Um, depends on the device. I mean, it's hard. It's really hard to say which device can be updated or not because they're so different. There's there's no one standard for IoT either. So it's really difficult to say, you know, which can be updated or not. Um, but my suggestion would be to update if you can. And if you can't update it, maybe don't use it for a while or, or find a final alternative for it, perhaps. Um, you know, routers, there are there are routers that are more secure than others. I'm not really sure of the list of it, but mm -hmm. routers, for example, you can always find, uh, there's obviously a list for it that's more secure than, than the other ones, but it's definitely a hard thing to really pinpoint. Especially when you have all of these different hardware manufacturers, you know, creating these devices for the home. If they don't have security in mind, and many of them, it's just not, 
I mean, it, it has. They haven't had reason to, so they they weren't necessarily built with that in mind. I mean, some of them probably have a much better kind of track record, better attention to updating that that hardware in light of st situations like this. Uh, some of them probably it's just not it's not a priority because it's not their you know their primary business or whatever. They just happen to have a device that connects to the internet that also controls something in your home. Uh, it's a huge challenge. Um, Krebs mentioned extortion is is a tool for criminals uh, like the the ones that are carrying out attacks like this. They they haven't linked extortion in this case directly yet. Uh, but but in that case, the fact that that these these attacks are capable of up to one terabyte per second, um, you know, some of these criminals are are saying that there are at this time, no protection systems that are strong enough to protect against that kind of uh, of an attack. If that's true, are we just destined to see more and more of these? Like, are we entering a new era of kind of DDoS insecurity on the internet right now? I think as the IoT botnet, for example, is a relatively new way of uh, doing this kind of large, massive scale DDoS attacks. So. Even if we solve this one, even if we manage to like sort of plug the hole of this particular attack, there's going to be more. There's going to be more of it because, you know, as as Krabs mentioned, um, it's one of those things where it's just going to keep happening. And uh, unfortunately, according to many news sites that I've, I've read today, the DDoS, DDoS attacks will still happen, even though we if, even though we stop one, like one right. method of attack. They will, they will still think of other methods of, of, of attack. So it's, it's a never-ending fight. And I think this is why we need to invest more in cybersecurity. We need to invest more in, you know, protecting our sort of a, our cyber ways in a way. Mm -hmm. So so we know what happened. Uh, we know how they did it. What about the why? I mean, I've heard, I've read it's like, um, you know, someone uh, responding to Julian Assange from WikiLeaks, um, <sighs> who's, uh, you know, whose internet got cut off. So this was like in retro, you know, in retribution for that. Uh, uh, do you have any ideas about like who this might have been and why they did it? So WikiLeaks did the tweet earlier today uh, that they're saying, you know, uh, something like, they, they were saying they apologized for their supporters trying to like attack the U.S. or something like that. So that was there have been reports and like reports from security researchers who basically they they doubt that this, this is actually happening. That according to their data, according to the report that they have, they really doubt that the WikiLeaks um, that has anything to, anything to do with the WikiLeaks essentially. So we, the reason is because these. These groups, these like the, I think the anonymous groups, have claimed responsibility for things they haven't done before. So it's very possible this is not their particular responsibility. It could be, it could be something else entirely. Um, I think it's very easy to politicize this, and maybe maybe it is a political thing. Maybe it is a, a Russian hack or something like that. But there's really no evidence right now to say one way or the other, and I really hesitate to point any fingers at this time until we have more proof. Absolutely. And I'm sure we're going to find out about that throughout the course of the weekend. If we don't uh, find out that we have no internet throughout the course of the weekend first, <laughs> we're going to need a little bit of internet in order to find out that other piece of information. Uh, Nicole Lee with Engadget. Uh, thanks so much, as always, for coming on. We really appreciate it, Nicole. Bye. Have Thank a great you. weekend.